Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to a video. This is a paid request for Sean. Thank you so much for that. For those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re reviews, random thoughts, tier list, rankings, whatever the case may be, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box, and I'll get to it as soon as, as, uh, as I can, as soon as possible. But Sean wanted me to look into TT's Delivery Service, which came out in 1989, which for some reason I always thought this was a... Uh, maybe I always thought this was like a 90s or 2000s. Maybe because like later on, you know, it would get dubbed by actors like Kirsten Dunst, Phil Hartman, that was done later on, then it was re-released. But yeah, this is technically a film from the 80s. By Hayao Miyazaki, who worked a lot with the studio Ghibli. And he directed films, he made films like Princess Mononoke, Howl's Moving Castle, The Boy and the Heron, which came out 2023. Of the films, I've probably only seen Princess Mononoke. And I wasn't really big on it. I know a lot of people love the film, it just didn't really hit it for me. But I will admit, I, I did not mind this film. I thought this was pretty good. It definitely has that distinct animation. Even if I haven't seen those other films I mentioned, I've seen the trailers, I've seen the clips. People talk about them because they were up for awards or they won awards. So I definitely know the way they look. And again, they all have a certain type of distinct style to them. But this one I didn't mind, I think just because of its simplicity, its straightforwardness, and its kind of sweetness that I thought worked fairly well as a story about acceptance. That's really what it is at the end of the day, a story of being accepted. Because you have Titi, a witch, she's turned about 13 years old. I did watch the dub version, in this case Kirsten Dunst who's been in the Spider-Man films with Sam Raimi, among other films. She voices the character. She has a black cat she could talk to, voiced by the late, great Phil Hartman, who, of course, was on Saturday Night Live and Jingle All the Way, Small Soldiers, passed away in a very, very unfortunate way. He, he, he voices black cat, so a little bit of a Sabrina the Teenage Witch style thing. Before that show was a thing, of course. But pretty much, I guess, with a witch, when they become of age, they have to venture out into the world and train for a year or so, kind of make it on their own. It's like, damn. Usually as 18 to 20, you're out the door when you're a witch. You're 13, you're out. I'm like, damn. Shit. It's pretty, pretty damn strict. But she's excited for it. She's gonna know about it. She made her own broom, but the mom wants her to fly her broom because she trusts it a bit more. And pretty much they fly off until they eventually come across another city and they kind of make their claim there. She meets someone who owns this bakery service who's pregnant. After helping her out with a few things, she offers this girl a room, bread and board, literal bread, and she, T.T. starts a delivery service, where she did get to places pretty quickly with her broom. And like I said, it's a pretty simple film. There's not... One interesting thing, there's not really any villains in the film. There's not some out-of-the-blue, mustache-twirling villain. I mean, there's people that may be kind of dickish, who are friends of this kid named... Tombo. But to be honest, I mean, they're... She doesn't trust them, but at the same time, they once all make like a little snide remark, but nothing too horrible or terrible to make them nasty villains or anything. Pretty much just her just trying to deal with living on her own, making friends. I get like the pregnant lady who owns the bakery shop. There's a point where she's delivering a toy. There's a storm that happens. She things go haywire. She loses the toy. She finds it at this painter, played by Jenny Garofalo, which I like Jenny Garofalo. I don't mind her. You don't really see her much anymore. I don't know 
what she does nowadays. I can't remember the last thing she was in because she was in a couple. She was a bit part in Dogma. I guess at one point Tim Smith wanted her to be the lead, but uh, I remember the commentary mentions he kind of wished she was the lead. It was so difficult to work with Linda Fiorentino. She was in Mystery Men. She did a lot of bit parts, except that The Truth About Cats and Dogs, I believe, is what it was called. But yeah, I don't know what she's done lately. But she voices a character. They start to become friends. And pretty much one day, like, she's Tombo the Kid, voiced by Matthew Lawrence. Is trying to be friends with her. But she's kind of acting like a bitch. Because I did it like. Maybe those kids that are with him. Are, they may not be the most smoothest of operators. Or may not be the clean cut nicest of people. But this kid Tombo has done nothing but be nice and kind. And say hi. And hey come to the. He's into aviation. He's into building planes and stuff. And it seems like you're starting to like them, but then, hey, come with my friends. And she's like, no. And it's not like they're like, hey, bitch, come suck my dick, you know. I mean, they're all 13, so you don't want that anyway, unless it was Disney. Maybe they allowed it, or whoever directed Cuties, maybe they allow it too. But it's not like they're doing anything like that. It's just, it honestly made me think Titi would be a bit bitchy herself. But it makes me wonder if that's what happens. I know I skipped a bunch of stuff, but spoiler alert. Well, actually, before I get to that, let me back up a bit. The animation is nicely done. Uh, the The music fits the film fairly well. It doesn't feel like it's too out of place. Thankfully, it's not some musical where people just start spouting songs randomly. Uh, it was nice to have Phil Hartman. It was... I mean, I miss Phil Hartman, so it was great to hear his voice. You tell that he's trying to work with the... Because with dubbing, you have to match with the movements of the voices on screen. And maybe, like, the way he's directed. So, it feels like, oh, great. Titi, why are we doing this over there? Okay, like, why are we doing this? Like, Phil Hartman is a great voice actor, as you could tell from the multitude of Simpsons episodes he did before he passed away. He did a lot of good characters, whether it be was selling the monorail or was it Troy McClure. So he definitely knows how to do voice work, so this seems more of how he was directed to act. So it took a bit like, okay, where are you going with this, Phil? But it's still nice to hear his voice. Again, I don't know if they have to like rework it and they can't be as natural as they want because they have to follow the mouth movements. And of course, because it's two different dialects, two different languages, you may have to say all this sentence, but you gotta say it very quickly or very succinct in this manner. To fit the mouth movements over there. So it doesn't seem like a bad Godzilla movie or something. Bad dub I should say. Bad dub of a Godzilla movie. To be fair. But like I said it's very simple. It's. You know when people. When she comes into town. I guess they know witches do exist. But they just haven't seen one in a long time. So one person. Oh man hey you're a witch. But, like, people are kind of shocked, and some people are like, huh. And then, well, like, when she's going through the crowd, there's one guy giving, like, a peace sign, which... <laughs> uh, something about that made me laugh. But I kind of like they didn't go with the cliche literal witch hunt. We need to hunt her down. She's dangerous. We gotta find her. We gotta arrest her for some reason. And, like, create drama, like, typical drama that would be with this usual type of either premise or ordeal or setup so I kind of like they didn't go with that route like I said it's just very simple with a nice animation 
person does I thought did fine once in a while her acting with got a bit irritating with like there's one where while she's staying with the this place near the bakery the woman say hey I'll let you use my phone for your delivery service and you'll have that room and well you can also have breakfast so there's a lot of bread or pancakes or other stuff and Titi's like man if I keep doing it will be fat 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 I'm like shush Titi shush so people would love that they love to have free food every damn day whether it's bread or what so shush There's one bit where she does his delivery, like I said, the gets caught in a storm. When she loses the toy, she has to find it, but before it, she has the cat pretend to be a toy for the kid. And the kid has his dog, and I assumed, okay, the dog's going to find out, and it's going to be chasing the dog, there's going to be all these hijinks. And this is spoilers. I was highly surprised, nicely surprised, that in fact... The dog just sniffed as she liked the cat and sat down beside it. And then when the girl finally got the toy from Jenny Garofalo and got back to where she needed, the dog just came out nonchalantly, placed the cat down. And even Phil Hartman's character is like, he's a good dog, let him have the toy and go back in. So the, do so the dog's looking at it go, hmm. Picks up the toy very lethargically, go walks back in, closes the door. <laughs> Like, that dog might have been my favorite character in the movie. He had no dialogue, so. I thought that was a nice... I uh, I guess I psyched myself up for the misdirection. Because I just, again, assumed it would be more of the... Lunacy, Looney Tunes type of hygiene. And it wasn't the case. She'll do more deliveries, like these pies, which the, the person who receives is, Oh, man, why did Grandma make these crummy pies again? Then she meets this kid, Tombo, who store Waldo. Remember, where's Waldo? Store his wardrobe, at least his shirt. I think his pants, too. But has, like, the, the red and white striped shirt. I'm like, are you... Is there a Where's Waldo movie in town? You trying to get up the roll? I think this was a highly praised, highly reviewed movie. Because it doesn't go into the typical tropes that you would see in a lot of Disney films or other animated films of that type. Like I said, it kind of added to more simple, unique flavor of it. Like I said, it's just a little story about acceptance. I can see though people watching going, well, okay, there's really not much in terms of action. There's really not much in terms of drama. There's really not much in terms of obstacles to overcome. It's just she gets there. Within five minutes or so, she finds a place to live. Her delivery service with a few hiccups goes decently well. She doesn't try to make friends with Tombo's friends, and that's where it's kind of like, okay, well, obviously you don't like them, and they probably don't like you, but if like, she attempted multiple times, and then they kind of shy her away, or like maybe I can understand, or if they try to really make it where Tombo introduces to her to them, and then she treats them like crap. And Tom was like, why are you doing that? I mean, yeah, they're, you know, they like to goof and they like to joke, but it made it a bit more of a stronger story point than maybe the bit where one day she falls ill, she gets better, that thing with Tombo happens, where he's like, hey, you want to come see my friend? She's like, I thought just go walk away. I didn't act in time but like a bitch. Then she loses her power. She can't hear her cat anymore. She can't fly anymore. 
And I don't really know why. But I don't know why that happens. Cause, and I know she eventually sees Janine Garofalo's character and she mentions it's like an artist block. But I, I still don't really deal where that came from. If it's like kind of her... Either her body or her whatever that makes her a witch... Go up against her and go and listen. You should give these people a chance. Acceptance is a two-way street. You're not making it easy for them to accept you. How about you go try to be friends and stuff. And it's kind of that... Okay, I don't have any power so I'm going to try to... I don't I didn't try to be friends, try to interact as a normal girl. And by learning acceptance, then she gets her powers back. Like maybe the, but no, it's just she loses her power as if it's Spider Man 2. And then there's this blimp that hits the clock tower. Yeah, clock tower. There ain't no idea. No DeLorean was involved in this clock tower. She sees that her, I was her friend question mark Tombo because he's always nice to her and always wanted to see her, but she, for a good job, it treats him like crap, from the get go. Makes me wonder why he keeps wanting to be her friend. But she grabs someone's broom and she revs up and she gets her powers back. It's not working the best, as I did. I did say spoilers. Saves the kid, becomes a hero, and I guess like her delivery service really ticks off, and her cat comes back, because it's funny, what, when she's being a drag, it's like even her cat leaves, leaves her ass. Her cat divorced her. But when the cat comes back, I, we never hear Phil Harpin's voice again. Although I thought it was cute, the, the idea that apparently the cat got laid because when you see the end credits and, th you know, little montage of what she's doing, the cat has like a little kitten of his own. So I don't know, something about that I thought was kind of cute. Not the idea of him getting laid, it's <laughs> just him having a kid. But we never hear Phil Harmon's voice, at least I don't think we do. I, I didn't hear it, at least the version I saw. So I'm like, okay, so even though she got the powers back, she never hears Phil Hartman's voice again? I thought, I don't know, maybe I missed something, or something was lost in translation, or maybe it was in the film and I just missed it, I blanked out and I apologize. But I don't remember him talking again, so... I thought, that's just gone for good? Or it's about, you can't talk to your cat anymore, and maybe it's that... Before she could rely on talking to her cat. But now that she's accepted, there's actual people she could talk to. But that would have worked a bit better if we actually saw her interact with those other kids. Or, like, there's one or two scenes of her being nice to Tombo, but maybe a few bits more to develop that friendship, or... Like I said, maybe a little bit more to that story I think could have worked it a little bit better for the narrative, at least to me. But yeah, if you're going into this for spectacle, for action, that's not the case at all. Like I said, it's a nice sweet bit of animation that looked good. Uh, yeah, I like the designs. I like the flying scenes. It was cool to hear Jan Janine Garofalo and Phil Hartman and such in the voice cast. The music was very well done. Music carries off that sweet nature that the rest of the films have. And, and like I said, uh, yeah, even I wish there was a little bit more to the to meat, to the meat of the matter, so to speak. I still kind of liked how simple and straightforward it was. So it didn't, like I said, it didn't feel like it had a foul, a typical guy line like a lot of animated films had. I guess you say maybe that's typical for Studio Ghibli movies. But I'm not as knowledgeable on them as other people are. But this one I didn't mind. Didn't mind it. That was pretty good. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. 
Thanks, Wesley and Sean, and uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye for now.